Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Now, on the line right now, we have uh, attorney Lee Merritt. Now, he is the attorney for Ahmad Arby. That's the gentleman that was killed as he was taking a jog uh, by his neighbors. Good morning. Hello. Lee, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up, G? Man, I'm blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Um, I, w- I want you to tell us what's happening with this. Uh, and, and correct me if I'm pronouncing, mispronouncing the brother's name, Ahmad Arbery. That's it, Ahmad Arbery. Ahmad Arbery, tell us about this situation, man. What, what's happening? What's the latest? Well, but before you do that, let's tell people who Lee is. Now we have Lee Merritt on the line. Now, Lee, you're an attorney. And, and to be clear, I'm a civil rights attorney. I represent the family of Ahmad Arbery. And, and we're and we're trying to get the legal apparatus of South Georgia to arrest the men responsible for his murder, uh, and to bring the appropriate hate crime charges. Uh, we we just got involved with this family maybe a week ago, and what we learned, what the family was initially told by law enforcement, was that Ahmad Arbery was in the midst of a burglary, was bur- actually mm-hmm. burglarizing the home, when uh, the homeowner caught him and use deadly force, which would have been completely justifiable under the law. That was the story the family was told. Obviously, the video came out yesterday. He was no, nowhere near anyone's habitat. He was jogging down the street. Um, and they, they already created an alternative narrative where these were people who they suspected him of burglarizing homes sometime in the past. And as a result, uh, they were tr- trying to perform a citizen's arrest. What you really had was a, a lynch mob who were going after the young man um, because they imputed criminality on him. And uh, they are still free today. So there's a number of things that we're asking people to do, but that's that's where we are with the story right now. Let's, let's say those guys' names, the McMichaels. What, 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 what's, the two, yeah. what's their name? And I want to say three names because people have been focusing on two peoples, but you have a son mm-hmm. and a father, Gregory McMichael, who's a former district attorney investigator, uh, 30-year lawman in South Georgia. His son, Travis McMichael, uh, who's not known for doing anything of significance. And then there's Brian Williams. Uh, Brian Williams. Williams. The person who, uh, I believe is the person who captured the video. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, he was part- he was actively participating in hunting down Ahmaud Arbery. Really? I don't know. This is oh, the video okay. I didn't that- realize that the video that he took, I thought it was just a, a bystander who happened to be filming everything that was going down. I didn't know that he was with them. Right. For, well, so break down what we see in that video. We see Ahmad running, and we see him him jogging. We see the truck stop, like to, to to block him off, and he's running around the truck. It looks like, and then him and that man get an altercation with the man with the pistol, and then we hear a couple of gunshots, and then we see Ahmad laying on the floor. We see two individuals. One guy shotgun. A shotgun. One guy outside the truck. One guy in the truck, and then we see the gentleman following. For people who don't know what video we're talking about, and and. And that's what we're trying to figure. Now, Ahmad, he was just doing his, his daily run. Is that correct? That's right. So Ahmad Arbery is an elite uh, All-American high school athlete from South Georgia. So, you know, football is king there. He's mm-hmm. very big in the football community. In fact, we first learned about it by NFL athletes who knew Ahmad and who had a relationship with him from his high school football days. Uh, and, and to break that video down a little further, the man that you see standing outside of the truck as Ahmad is jogging down the street is Travis McMichael, and he is standing there with a shotgun. It appears that Ahmad was surprised by his presence because if you if you slow that video down frame by frame, you can see mm-hmm. him jogging at a steady pace. And as he approaches the truck, he sees a man standing there with a long gun, and so he darts to the right, and the man lifts the long gun and goes after him. At this point, the two are off screen. That's when you hear the first shot. And after that, you see Ahmad fighting for his life. And I'm, I'm going to say I'm so proud of Ahmad. And his mom hasn't been able to watch this video, but Ahmad gave these men the fight for their lives. And and I, I, if nothing else, I can appreciate, and I've been reflecting on Claude McKay, I can appreciate him saying, look, I'm, I'm going down fighting. I wish Ahmad had, had a gun. To, I, I wish Ahmad had a gun to shoot back. So when people say, right, that they're doing a citizen's arrest, Okay, because that's the story. Now the story has changed into, oh, from going from seeing someone breaking into a house to then doing a citizen's arrest. What are the rules for a citizen's arrest? Right. And so I I first I want to emphasize that this was not a citizen's arrest. That's a story Mm -hmm. that they later came up with. However, if if you are a Georgia citizen and attempting to perform a citizen's arrest, you must personally observe a crime. 
It must be actively ongoing or uh, that crime that just happened must be within your direct knowledge. In other words, you heard a gunshot, you looked over your shoulder, you saw someone lying on the ground. You can assume that the person holding the smoking gun is a, is is a criminal suspect, uh, but other other than that, you have to see it with your own eyes. The only thing that these men ever told law enforcement they saw was a mod Arbery running down the road, and at some point he stopped by a property that was under construction, and he looked through the window, and they used that to say, well, that was enough to perform a citizen's arrest, and it's just not. Now let me ask you a question. Now, Ahmad, you you said that uh, they thought that Ahmad was suspected of robbing houses before. So Ahmad lives in the area and he, and he runs. Has he had run-ins with these people before? He has never been accused, suspected, arrested for breaking into homes before. He is a known runner, uh, but mm-hmm. he has he, the only crime that they have ever even brought up with him was something from high school uh, in a shoplifting incident. So, no, which has he nothing li- to do with this, by the way, at all. I don't even know why they're bringing that up. Did he live in this neighborhood? He lived. He lived a few blocks away, according to his dad. So did they know yeah. each other? Did the McMichaels and the um, uh, Aubrey's know each other? Yeah, have they seen him before? No, so, no, so this is a very segregated community. So unless, mm-hmm. you know, he's going by for his run, black folks aren't going to be hanging out on the, in this part of, part of town. Nice. Now, Lee, can I ask you another question about Gregory McMichael, being that he was in law enforcement previously? What's the rules when it comes to that? Because it feels like he's getting some type of preferential treatment. So he should be treated as any other criminal suspect, but the person responsible for arresting him, the department, Glen County Police Department, he used to work for. And the district attorney responsible for charging him uh, uh, passed on the case because of her conflict. It got moved over to the next district attorney over, Barnhill, and Barnhill hid the fact that he knew the shooter personally, that his son grew up with the shooter, and he, he gave the opinion that these guys did nothing wrong before it was discovered that he had these direct ties to him. And so he had to transfer the case as well. It's now on his third district attorney who is refusing to go arrest these men, which he it, it is in his power to do, but he's claiming because of Corona uh, and the quarantine that he can't do it until after the grand jury convenes sometime after uh, in mid June. Nope. If Georgia can open up everything else, they can op- open up them damn courts now. Come on now. That's right. Yeah, now listen, and, and, and it's a poor, it's a poorly veiled excuse. They can arrest these men. They should arrest these men today, and that's what we're pushing for. Question, Lee: If this guy pulled a gun on Ahmad and then Ahmad defended himself, how can it then go back to this white man saying he was defending himself? They will not be able to successfully avail themselves of the self-defense statute because you cannot agitate. I'm sorry, legally mm-hmm. they should not be able to. I shouldn't say will not be able to because. For the same reason that George Zimmerman should not have been able to claim self-defense against Trayvon Martin, for instance, that he instigated, mm-hmm. uh, these men can't you can't chase a man down with guns, cut off all of his exits, because the man behind that was recording is with the posse. So you have a man with a gun and a truck behind him, men with guns in the truck in front of him. He had no other options. And so you can't claim self-defense when you corner uh, a, a citizen. I saw today that Joe Biden is coming forward and now demanding justice also for uh, Ahmad Arbery's family. I hadn't seen that. I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, Biden is speaking up. We need him to be uh, vocal on all of these incidences, but not just give mm-hmm. lip service to it. He can speak to his context uh, from mm-hmm. his long and illustrious career at the U.S. Department of Justice, because there are still some good U.S. attorneys in South Georgia who will be able to handle this case, who will go out and make the arrest, and who will successfully prosecute these men for hate crime charges. So not just words from uh, Mr. Biden, we need action. Now, yeah. when they shot and killed this 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 young man, uh, I'm sure they called the police, they called 911. And when they called 911, what was the reason for shooting? Because, I, I mean, all that's taped. Right. So they called 911 prior to shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they said, they said we see a man, uh, it, and excuse my language, he said there, he's hauling ass down the road. Um, and so that was their justification for stopping him. And when law enforcement finally r- responded to the scene after a model bear was already dead, the excuse they used was, well, we were trying to perform a citizen's arrest. And he, well, they didn't say that at the time. They said mm-hmm. this man came after us and started violently attacking us. And so we had to defend ourselves. So the video what? clearly shows that 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 wasn't the case. So it clearly shows that they're lying, correct? Directly refutes all of their previous claims. Mm-hmm. How did how did they get the video from Brian Williams? If he was down with him, how did they get that video? So the the video was anonymously uh, shared online, 
we assume that they shared it around their circles for a while. And as the story began to get publicity over since the New York Times wrote it about it about two weeks ago, uh, someone leaked it and, and uploaded it online. So them goddamn devils was bragging about it, basically posting it on social media. The, the day that they murdered Ahmad, his father went on on Facebook and bragged, my son was the shooter, as if he was proud of it. Wow. No. Damn. I saw a group of kids, uh, they were protesting, and they, well, I don't know if it was just kids, but just a, a group of black people, and they were walking to the McMichael's house. What, what, did they actually do that? I heard that they were out there walking to um, the McMichael's house. I'm curious, honestly, whether other Georgia citizens can avail themselves of the citizen arrest statute and go in and arrest uh, of these men because there's clear evidence that they committed a murder and the, uh, Very true. the authorities have not made the arrest. And so, and the authorities have even offered the opinion that these men could in fact perform a citizen's arrest of a mod. So what is stopping the citizens of Georgia from arresting this man? Now I'm, I'm not advising anyone put themselves in harm's way, but I'm wondering what, whether we endure, enjoy the same protections under the law as these men do. Well, you know, you know, we don't cause we black a question though. If, if I'm driving, right. Say I was driving down the road and I saw a mod fighting for his life against these, these three devils. And I have my pistol on me. If I jumped out and shot one of them, what would happen to me? Because it reminds me of the Tupac case from back in the day when Tupac shot some, some, somebody he saw getting assaulted. Right, right, right. Now, I imagine you will be arrested and charged with murder or uh, aggravated assault. Uh, now, under the law, you are allowed to protect a third person. You can see someone under attack like Brother Ahmad and say, I'm going to use my right to intervene for the safety of this person. It's completely uh, legal under the, under the uh, statute. You know, I was wondering, uh, you know, people like this, this is not new to them. Is there any other cases of them harassing black people or anybody else in the neighborhood? Do we have anybody stepped up and said, hey, I had a situation with them before at all? So far, we have not been able to find those incidences. But like I said, Gregory McMichael, the father, is a 30-year lawman. Uh, somebody who had a gun on his hip at all times. I I'm sure that we're going to find instances of brutality in his past. We find them in every case. Amber Geiger shot somebody not not too long before, not too soon before she shot Bolton John. Roy Oliver, who killed Jordan Edwards, had a long history of violence. So every time these these police officers are caught, it's their third or fourth time at the rodeo. Right. Hey man, um, what do we got to do, Lee? What do we got to do? Gregory McMichaels, Travis McMichaels, Brian Williams. Like, what kind of noise do we got to make around this situation to make sure that these guys get arrested? Because I don't even I don't even understand how they can even say this brother was a burglar. Because burglars don't wear white T-shirts and shorts and sneakers to go break in nobody's house in broad daylight. In the middle, in the middle of the day. Uh, <laughs> the person responsible right now for holding this, these men accountable is Tom Durden, a local Southern prosecutor. I don't trust Tom Durden to get the job done. I believe that the, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation should step in, uh, that a U.S. attorney should take on the case, that we should be looking at federal hate crime charges because the local uh, law enforcement community over the past two and a half months has shown us what they plan to do to these men, which is absolutely nothing. We would be fools to sit back and wait for the legal process, for the, the grand jury to open up. Uh, and for these men to be charged by local prosecutors. That is that is asking for our community to be disappointed. So if you go to runwithmod.com, that's runwithmaud.com, we will give mm -hmm. you specific action steps to take to ensure that uh, that the right prosecutors get involved in the case, that there is a complete and thorough investigation. And again, we are pushing uh, for local officials to go out and arrest these men today. They are a danger to the community. Uh, they are a danger to the peace, and there's no reason that they should be free pending uh, indictment. Is there a number we can call just to harass that guy you just mentioned? Tom, what did you say? Thomas what? Durden. Uh, Tom Durden. Tom Durden. Is that You can find the number on runwithmodmaud.com. We will take you through an entire prompt. We provide scripts for you to go through. Uh, we have all the numbers that you can reach for the decision makers in this case. Got you. I want, right. I'm, 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 I'm going to put a petty party on uh, all the decision makers, man. Oh, yeah, 770-800-0689 to demand justice for Ahmad right away. I'm on the website right now. I want all of our Breakfast Club listeners to go call that number, 770-800-0689. Let's have a petty party on that phone line today and demand justice for Ahmad, man. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, Thank brother. you, Lee. Appreciate you, King. We can talk. No, no problem, family. I appreciate you guys. 
All righty, bro. Thank you.